<laughs> Don't forget sunscreen, boo. Oh, howdy. Let's chat about our maniacal, single-minded friend from Bikini Bottom. This is Platon! <laughs> Honestly, at this point in the series, I just really want to see him find a hobby outside Krabby Patties. One that intellectually stimulates that brilliant mind. But most importantly, brings him some joy. But let's take a closer look to see if he ever has stepped outside his cliched obsession with the Krabby Patty. Because underneath that obsession, I do think there's an interesting character there. So let's check out the five worst and best Plankton episodes. All hail Plankton! All hail Plankton! Ooh, I think I stepped in something. And just a heads up, this video was sponsored by Private Internet Access VPN. Later on, I'll chat a bit about my pleasant experience with them. But without further ado, on to the countdown for the fifth. Watch it, boo. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. For the fifth worst, Karen 2.0. <gasps> Karen 2? I've been replaced? Ugh, there's just no way to like Plankton in this one. Karen has done nothing but be a good wife to Plankton for many years, constantly tolerating his endless obsession with sandwiches. And without a second thought, he heartlessly dumps Karen without even a slight seem to care for her feelings. In fact, he outright lets her be powered off completely by his new wife, Karen 2.0, and then he trashes her. Which means he's essentially just killed Karen, or at least permanently put her to sleep. Neither one's good. I accessed the Chum Bucket power grid. Remotely cutting off Karen's power. If it were just a mindless robot, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But Karen's shown many times to have an intelligent, complex, emotional AI capable of human thought. In other words, Karen has self-awareness. If they want to go their separate ways, that's fine. But I think it crosses the line when Plankton outright shuts off her brain. Goodbye, Karen Classic. Hello, Karen too! Fortunately, Spongebob stumbles upon her in the trash, and crabs, of course, can't pass up free stuff. Needless to say, when they do power her back on, she's pretty distraught. <laughs> you need to cry, little lady. Don't tell me not to cry. <laughs> SpongeBob tries to comfort her, but just makes things worse. And now he's built someone with more modern features who's better in every way. That's no, uh, what was my point again? And it is really hard to not feel bad for Karen here. Even admits helping the villain of the show for the entire series, she still remained a very likable character. So seeing her treated so horribly was just unpleasant to me. And seeing her constantly bicker with Karen 2. 2.0 just felt like weak writing. Who are you calling cheap? At least I don't rust. You know, you're gonna wish you deleted that comment. I mean, she fights Karen 2.0 as if trying to win Plankton back, but why would she want to win him back? No one runs down my man. Karen, he, he shut you down six minutes ago and literally threw you in the trash. Maybe you should think this one through. You should be putting a restraining order on this guy, not taking him back. Needless to say, they do get back together in the end, but I found it really hard to put aside what a jerk Plankton was. The only plus of the episode for me? I think seeing Karen in Squidward's role of the Krusty Krab was a nice novelty. You'll get your Krabby Patty when I'm good and ready! And for the fifth best, Teacher's Pest. Along with this and Karen's virus, there have been some great season 11 Plankton episodes. I get such a kick out of this one. There's so many things I like about this episode. For one, it is so refreshing to see Plankton not doing something related to the stupid Krabby Patty. So that alone is always gonna score points with me. For two, I think it's nice to see Krabs and Plankton competing in something together, particularly when it's not related to their typical overdone restaurant fights. Forget it, Eugene. I I am going to be the star pupil! Even after all these years, I still love the dynamic between these two. They had this way of playing off each other like two silly childhood rivals. It's charming, relatable, and kind of adorable seeing these two compete. This one's mine! <laughs> and this one's mine! <laughs> And three, it's a small detail, but Mrs. Puff doesn't take guff from these two. And I always like seeing Mrs. Puff stand up for her mistreatment. Brass knuckles, huh? Respect. One of my favorite parts, though, has to be their driving safety video. You can probably guess who is their example of being a bad driver. You don't want to be a SpongeBob. Oh, that's me! 
Something I really appreciate about modern Spongebob is they're really good at putting odd combinations of characters in different settings. For example, here we see two hard-headed personalities like Krabs and Plankton having to put up with a fellow student like Spongebob. And this comedy had me laughing a lot. This is solid quality slapstick humour. I just don't get why some people complain about the really modern seasons of Spongebob. Some of them are legitimately really funny. Everything's so over the top and well-timed. It's like something I'd see in a Looney Tunes cartoon. Modern episodes like this have a way of catching me off guard and making me laugh out loud. Like anyone could see this part coming, yet it's so well timed that it makes me chuckle still. And I lost it when they did the stunt again. And again! Teacher's Pest is completely transparent hijinks between crabs and plankton. That's it, and it's great. And it's among my favourite plankton episodes. Hey guys, I finished that- For the full- Oh, yeah, sure, Lou. Want chocolate chip or- Pat Nocio. Sadly, I had to follow Teacher's Pest up with one of the weaker Season 11 episodes. While I think the pacing is still high quality modern Spongebob, the story just meanders around randomly with nothing happening. Now this may strike you as hard to believe, but hear me out. Did you know that Patrick is kinda stupid? I know, right? Who would have ever guessed that? How many plankton does it take to change a light bulb? Seriously though, the old Patrick is stupid jokes seem to be the majority of jokes on display here. Patnocio goes nowhere fast. It's mostly about Plankton as he pretends to be Patrick's conscience. But of course Patrick's not too bright, so they do lots of not too bright stuff together. The very first assumption you had of what happens in this episode? Well, it's probably correct. I mean, I guess it has plenty of bright colours and silly sounds, but it's pretty much devoid of any smart dialogue. It's pretty much all fluff. It's not offensive fluff, but much more loud, key-jangly fluff than usual. I mean, surely after all these years, even the little kids understand that Patrick isn't bright. Surely this shtick is getting boring to them too. But what are some of the good points about this episode? Well, I like some of the callbacks we got, such as Patrick and Plankton visiting the Goofy Goobers restaurant from the first movie, or when Plankton actually ventures inside Pearl's stomach. And he does this while acknowledging his fear of whales at the same time. If you've seen one of the absolute worst Spongebob episodes, One Course Meal, you'll probably realise what a massive step this is for Plankton. Good on you for facing your fears, Plankton. Again, not an offensively bad Plankton episode, but I find season 10 plus of Spongebob tends to have a quality minimum standard that season 6 to 9 can't even compare to. But unlike most modern Spongebob episodes, I actually found myself pretty bored watching through this one. And the fourth best Plankton episode? Inside Job. Hang on, a good season 7 episode? Why, it's opposite day! The creativity that goes into this episode is part of what really makes it memorable. You see, Plankton has a special contraption that essentially lets him enter the bodies of other characters. But when trying to use it on crabs, he accidentally stumbles into Spongebob's body. And props to the writers for making this joke go from predictable to unexpected in the blink of an eye. You're mine! Hey, where do you want this life-size cutout of you, Mr. Krabs? So Plankton, of course, uses his contraption to try and get the formula from Spongebob instead. This results in some really fun visuals of Spongy's body and how it functions. It gives Plankton a lot to work with and many ways to be amusingly foiled. Can he use Spongebob's eyes to find it? He's going to make a Krabby Patty right in front of me! And a squirt of special sauce. Wait, soap is their special sauce? Well, what about his ears? Maybe Krabs will tell him the formula. Well, maybe we can get real abstract and look in Spongebob's brain for the formula. Hi, friend! Why am I making idiotic comments? <gasps> Superficial greetings? If not, then maybe the heart? How cheesy. Okay, that is really cheesy. Okay, the psychology nerd in me needs to point this out here. The heart in this analogy is representing the frontal lobe, limbic system, and amygdala. Elements of the insular cortex are also in play. <laughs> but anyway. 
This episode reminds me of one of my favorite Disney movies of all time, Inside Out. Maybe because Inside Out also looks at the creative ideas we can find simply within our body and brain. It's a genuinely creative take on Plankton trying to get the secret formula. Inside Job is definitely a Plankton episode where I couldn't predict what was going to happen next. It's memorable, and I can certainly recommend it. It's beautiful! But it's... <laughs> Plankton gets the boot. Ugh, oh, in my opinion, this is easily among the weakest episodes of season 10. So little happens, and the little that does happen is really stupid. We start with Plankton, of course, being a jerk to his wife, until Karen has finally had enough and boots Plankton out. Good for her. The rest of the episode is just a slog. We already know what's gonna happen. SpongeBob makes a valiant but futile effort to teach Plankton how to not be a selfish rear wipe to his wife. Unfortunately, as Plankton's own computer analyzes, Sample is 100% big jerk. This is another of those episodes where you can pretty much predict everything that happens before it happens. Plankton's gonna be horrible and get thrown out of the house. He's gonna go live with SpongeBob. Spongy's gonna try and fail to teach him to be nice. Why does he fail? Well, there's a status quo. Plankton and Karen have to get back together at the end of the episode, even if Plankton's horrible to her. Probably the dumbest plot twist they do, though, is the final segment. I thought Plankton was incredibly intelligent. What is he doing? Who would he think would be fooled by this? Oh my dear Shelby Nautica, you are the most beautiful woman I've ever laid my eye on. Oh Plankton Poo, you say the sweetest things. Gee whiz, don't you want to see this guy win his wife back by making her jealous? Ugh. And what is it that magically convinces Karen to come back? Because she realizes by Plankton trying to make her jealous, he was trying to win her back? Why? With all due respect, Karen, you really deserve higher expectations than that. Anyway, Plankton is at his most obnoxious and annoying in this episode. But most tragic of all, it's a Season 7 style slog. And normally, Season 10 is written way better than that. And before we get to the third best, just a heads up, this video is sponsored by Private Internet Access VPN. As I mentioned before, I try to always be transparent with you. And something I appreciate about PIA is they're really transparent with their users too. They use 100% open source software and never record or store user data. Not bad. When I go to the settings, I was immediately shown the type of connection the VPN's using, the encryption, the port, and the proxy. Everything I could think of, PIA is completely upfront about. And in the postmodern social media age, well, that's always appreciated to me personally. Private Internet Access uses technology that hides your online activity from your internet service provider, network administrator, and government sensors. It's also the most customizable VPN on the market, allowing you to make your VPN experience your own. It also works with all major streaming services so you can access unrestricted content wherever you wish. Signing up is risk-free as well with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and their customer support team is available 24-7. Personally, I really enjoy the super easy, fast interface and the extra details shown. For example, I'm told the latency of every VPN I can choose as soon as I'm shown the different service. And in just two clicks, I can switch to over 100 VPN locations offered. Their clean, minimalist user interface really suits my personal aesthetics too. Personally, I think I found a new favorite VPN service. You can go through my link to get PIA VPN for only $3 a month and an extra two months for free, which means only $2.08 a month and 83% off. Anyway, thank you for your patience. Let's continue the countdown. And I think the third best Plankton episode episode is Single Cell Anniversary. Truth be told, I used to think this episode came straight from the first three seasons of Spongebob, but I recently was surprised when I realized it actually came from season six. I think it's generally agreed by many people there's a lot of mediocrity in season six. In fact, spoiler alert, some of them have made this worst list. And it's the episode that helped me understand Karen and Plankton's relationship a lot better. It's about Plankton racking his brains on what to get Karen for their anniversary. As Karen has gotten him the one thing he has always wanted. The Krabby Patty formula, of course. I think part of why I assumed it was an early season episode is the story just flows so naturally, like an early episode. Classic SpongeBob managed to make its comedy and sincerity blend together harmoniously. 
simultaneously. And that's exactly what Single Cell accomplishes too. We get a feel for Karen and Plankton's home life, where the two actually do seem like a couple. It's one of the few times where we see the two not just plotting to steal the formula. In fact, this episode completely subverts the need for that in the most blatantly easy way. One Krabby Patty, please. Hey, what do you know? It really was that easy. I guess Plankton just needed the five minutes of common sense required to ask his wife for help. And without having to worry about stealing the formula, we finally get to see Plankton toned down a bit. We get a good taste of how Plankton feels about Karen as he casually opens up to a helpful Spongy about it. This allows SpongeBob to figure out the best gift for Karen. You need to serenade her. Who, me? I can't sing. Not to worry. When you're done, you'll be as golden-voiced as me. Ah, Tom Kenny. It's always nice to hear your amazing singing voice. But that's what carries this episode. Me. Uh, no, not you, Tom. But your singing is lovely. It's that every scene finds a way to show us why these two together work so well. Karen is very attentive to Plankton, so much so that she tries to wash the stench of failure off him, both metaphorically and physically. Better. See, unlike Plankton gets the boot, Plankton shows genuine interest in Karen here. Yeah, he obviously doesn't care about anniversaries, but when he talks to SpongeBob, he genuinely shows his affection for Karen. And uh, there's the cutest bull on her CPU, and the way she processes data. <laughs> Woo, mama. Plankton's attentive to the subtle things on Karen. Things I can't imagine anyone else ever noticing or seeing. The other reason the episode is so fondly remembered is, of course... Oh my Karen, oh my Karen, put down those punch cards, put down those punch cards, and listen to my ode. Even before I rewatched this episode many years later, I was already humming, oh my Karen, oh my Karen. I think it helps that this song has actual care and attention put into it. The obscure computer parts he's labeling actually had a layer of sweetness to it. By the end, I had a much better picture of why these two work well together, despite their seemingly rough life together. Yes! I'm saved! Your wife exploded! The fact that this popped up amidst the mediocre writing of season six feels as likely as a cosmic anomaly. And speaking of bad season six episodes, and for the second worst, Plankton's regular. Yeah, unfortunately, this was the kind of horrors I was expecting from season six. This is all about Plankton being miserable and suffering. So what are you gonna do about it? I don't know anymore. <laughs> there really doesn't seem to be any other point to it. And most of this pointless suffering comes at the hands of Krabs and SpongeBob. Though you nabbed Krabs trying to steal your formula, I'm still here to foil your evil plans. You remember what some people call Squidward torture episodes? Well, this is what I call a plankton torture episode, where the story seems to revolve around making him the failure butt monkey. You see, for once, plankton has found one single appreciative customer of his chum. Someone actually likes his chum. It's wonderful, because this is something he made with his own talents. You're kidding, right? No, I'm serious. I want a chumstick. So finally, the tables are turned, and Krabs is jealous of Plankton's one customer. See, I really like the concept of this. For once, Plankton can finally turn his attention away from the Krabby Patty and focus on his own business. What a freaking revelation. Did you see that? I didn't even have to threaten his life. He loved it. It's actually really cute how excited he seems when he sees someone enjoying his chum. He happily runs off to make another batch and eagerly awaits the customer the next day. Ah, good for you, Plankton. I'm just saying I no longer need to copy you, Krabs. I've got my own winning recipe now. I gotta reiterate, for once he's not comparing himself to others. He's improving his own business and adding to his success, not just looking at his failures compared to others. But it turns out Krabs and SpongeBob can't even let Plankton have one customer. You gotta get that guy back on our side with a couple of Krabby Patties. Oh, you can count on me, sir. Really, guys? What a bunch of turds. It's only going to fuel Plankton's lifelong unhealthy obsession with your stupid sandwiches if you don't let him have this, Krabs. SpongeBob endlessly harasses this one customer to the point that he could easily call a restraining order. Ah, oops. Ah, oops. Ah, oops.
Spongebob's. I know it's cliche to say, but this isn't the Spongebob I know. Because seasons 1 to 3 or season 10 plus Spongebob would never do this. I'm the number one driver! Well, good for you, Plankton. Don't congratulate him, Spongebob! Mr. Krabs' classmates support each other and he just said he's number one! He'd want Plankton to have this one customer because it lets him be happy. I couldn't help as I was watching the episode but think, why? Why are they doing this? This could end the stupid restaurant fight and we could all finally move on to a different plot point. Also, no surprise for season 6, the jokes are just plain weak. Perhaps it's a nitpick, but the double inside out jokes just felt kind of gross rather than funny to me. It's unpleasant enough visuals that I wouldn't even add this to a thumbnail because it feels too gross and attention seeking. What am I gonna do? I can't let Plankton have so much as one single customer! <laughs> why? What is wrong with you crabs? And why is Spongebob being his mindless yes man on this? There's an even stupider twist at the end. And surprise, surprise, it leads to Plankton falling into a pit of despair. Charming. Believing he has no hope of ever having a successful restaurant. Leaving us on Krabs laughing in his face. What a freaking charmer. This irony's pretty good stuff! <laughs> Did I mention I really don't like Krabs? Episodes like this really don't help. This is a bad enough episode that it actually made me mad watching it. It is easily one of the worst Plankton episodes. Oh, whoa, it's me! <laughs> and I think the second best Plankton episode is... The algae's always greener. When I heard there was a body switch plot for this episode, I was really intrigued. What if Plankton finally got what he wanted and actually was the owner of Krusty Krab? What if he was a successful restaurant owner like Krabs? Would he finally be satisfied then? Well, it doesn't take a telepath to know, no, he wouldn't. But what exactly would it be like when Plankton switches lives with Krabs? Suddenly, Plankton is Krabs. I'm in the Krusty Krab. And that means the life switcher was a success! Having to deal with Spongebob, Squidward, the Krusty Krab, and of course, Pearl. Daddy! Daddy, 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 daddy! And it turns out all of them make for a surprisingly demanding role. It's actually hard to think of a body switch episode in a cartoon that I didn't end up liking. Because it always brings out so much creativity. But in this case, we get a nice change on that body switch formula. Where rather than the voice actors simply changing characters for an episode, Plankton is suddenly in a strange alternative universe. A universe where a tiny amoeba-sized copepod runs a crusty crab. And he's surrounded by staff 50 to 100 times bigger than him. And a giant whale daughter, for some reason. Could I please have a, um, an advance on my allowance? I guess Pearl really is adopted. Because seriously, this cannot be anatomically possible. Not even in a cartoon. It's just like, no, that, that, that can't happen. Okay, Daddy, Daddy I've Daddy, decided Daddy, I'm gonna Daddy, run Daddy, away. Daddy, run away and Daddy, find a new Daddy! Daddy. Make it stop! This is another case where I could never predict what was going to happen next. How could Plankton possibly manage to screw this up when Spongebob is literally handing him two Krabby Patties? Uh, yes. Uh, very nice. Uh, thanks. The creative part of this episode is what elaborate ways it can be messed up when Plankton is given everything he could want. It's also a good enough episode that there are memes that originate from it too. Such as, of course, the good old-fashioned... Oh my god! But probably my favourite part is the last half, where we discover the biggest danger of all. The Krabs version of Plankton. There's a great build-up to Krabs appearing. We all know he's coming, and I found myself wondering, what is Krabs' new attire going to be as the new Plankton? Well, it's none. I mean, literally none. Krabs does all his raids for the Krabby Patty buck naked. He tackles out, and it is the restaurant's mission to get him into a pair of pants. For no shirt, no pants... No service! And from that point, the entire episode just goes off the wall silly, and it's brilliant. Algae's Always Greener gave me lots of laughs, and I definitely recommend this one. Victory Screech! And of course, for the obligatory dishonourable mention, no points for guessing what it is, that's right, one coarse meal. As I mentioned in my Worst and Best Crabs video, this one has been talked about to death at this point. We all know it's bad already. Plankton's tortured relentlessly in it by crabs. It certainly wasn't any fun for anybody. Maybe except crabs. Anyway, moving on. I want Plankton meat! Holy protozoa! More importantly, here are the honourable mentions. 
Karen's Virus. I'm a real fan of this one. If I hadn't already discussed it in Weirdest Modern SpongeBob episodes, I'd almost certainly add it to this list, as it's one of my personal favourites. Plankton's shown to be more of a caring husband, genuinely concerned about his wife's well-being. And Karen going loony is pretty hilarious. My ones and zeros look like Karen. Plus, the visuals of seeing Spongebob inside Karen's computer world are some of my favourite in the series. Super awesome, you fantastic! Wow! Walking Small. This is just high quality classic Spongebob writing. Plankton does everything he can to try and make Spongebob assertive, and Spongebob's clumsy attempts to do this end up making him just accidentally be nice to people. You've gotta be aggressive to get the things you want. It's a very genuine and charming classic episode and has plenty of laughs. I just can't take so much kindness in one sitting. Plankton. This is a season one episode where Plankton is formally introduced. This is Plankton! as well as introducing his bitter rivalry with Krabs. And his first scheme is really funny. Oh, I'll get a Krabby Patty. And you're gonna hand deliver it to me personally! And if you're familiar with the games, you might know that's not the only thing introduced here. In fact, we finally get to see the legendary Golden Spatula. Shing! Sparkle, sparkle. Wow! A golden spatula! No doubt we'll be seeing those again in the Spongebob games. I would argue this is one of Plankton's most nefarious, dastardly schemes of all. He literally enters into Spongebob's brain and attempts to plug into it. And the results are kinda hilarious. There's good jokes, good character development, and great timing. It's an exceptional entrance for Plankton. Definitely one of my favourites. Gee. And I thought you were stupid. Yeah, I can understand you getting that impression from seasons 6 to 9, Spongebob, particularly, Plankton. Take a hike! F U N. Fun. Here! Take the stupid patty, I don't want the secret recipe anyway. That's right, Plankton just gave up. And it's actually really fascinating to see the man outside the obsession. Here we see Spongebob try and expand outside Plankton's Krabby Patty obsession. The episode asks the question. What if Plankton actually had something else to do with his time? What if he actually had a friend? But sadly, because this series has to maintain the status quo and Plankton can never grow, he once again goes after the Krabby Patty. But not before breaking down and first admitting he had a moment of joy with Spongebob. I thought Plankton had changed. Don't blame him, lad! Blame the status quo. We gotta keep this franchise running for another 12 years, laddie. Anyway, on to number one. And I found the number one worst Plankton episode to be... Grandma's Secret Recipe. Oh yes, it's season seven. Be afraid. Be very afraid. And it's a stupid enough episode to make me cringe just thinking about. To start with, I find it hard to express how tired I am of the stupid shtick in cartoons that old people are apparently so gross and boring or something. A bit like poop jokes, I consider it the weakest of jokes and just plain stupid. This entire episode is dedicated to Plankton pretending to be SpongeBob's uh, great Grammy Ma? It's me, your dear old great Grammy Ma. Now you see, a good SpongeBob episode would probably consider that a three to five second joke to be discarded quickly. That way, if it doesn't get a laugh, it's no big deal. What are you doing? But nope, not season seven. It believes this is comedy gold. And it keeps this train wreck a rolling for the entire episode. It's just harrowing. Knitting circles sure are fun, eh, Grammy Ma? Nope. How is this even meant to be funny or clever in any way? Are the kids meant to be rolling on the floor laughing because Plankton looks kind of old? I just don't get how season seven continually has this ability to slap me in the face with a dead fish like this. Oh. Nobody ever uses this door except for me and Squidward! No! How do so many of this season's episodes manage to be such monumental stinkers? The whole time, all that happens is Plankton gritting his teeth as he pretends to be SpongeBob's great-grandma. And this is, of course, Season 7 Spongebob, so he is so catastrophically stupid that he can't even see through this obvious disguise. It's just cringy watching Plankton try and pull off this stupid drag act. Grandma, you getting bored? I'm afraid we all are, Spongy. How is the audience meant to be having fun when even the main character Plankton is bored out of his mind? 
This episode was so boring to me that it was legitimately frustrating to watch. The only, the only thing I liked about this episode, I thought the last 10 seconds with the real grandma showing up was kind of a cute finish. That's it. But apart from that, this episode is irredeemably terrible. And personally, I consider it the worst, most tedious Plankton episode of all. And it was a close one, but I personally think the number one best Plankton episode is Plankton's Army. It's the 25th anniversary of Plankton's first attempt to take the Krabby Patty formula. And Plankton's gonna throw everything he's got at Krabs. In this case, his hundreds of relatives. Hey, look here, buddy. It's Cousin Plankton. There's so many fun elements to this episode that really work well. One of my favorites is the squish gag. It's basically Plankton being squished no matter what he does, and the repetition just makes it better. We also get a bit more insight into Plankton as a character. Where does he come from? How do the other Planktons act? Apparently, well, all of them are hellbellies. I've been away from home longer than I thought. It seems like Plankton really stood out from his heritage in becoming educated in science and technology. The jokes are definite hits too. Like, the way Karen takes learning her husband's first name is actually Sheldon. <laughs> and dignity. <laughs> the episode does repetition jokes so well, the way they just build up, it's just great. I also like seeing Karen get the spotlight for a moment, and not seeing how much personality and sass she has. Okay, we all know Sheldon's a funny name. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm done. As much as I do get tired of the old shtick of Plankton chasing the Krabby Patty formula, I felt this was a particular approach that actually took me by surprise. I really wanted to know how like 100 to 1000 Planktons could actually manage to screw this up. But in fact, Plankton doesn't screw up. For the first time ever, Plankton wins and manages to open the safe to the Krabby Patty formula. But it appears Krabs has one last failsafe up his sleeve. And the build up is great because you and I have been waiting so long to see this stupid Krabby Patty formula and what it actually is. I actually felt my heart racing a little as the Krabby Patty formula is slowly revealed. Or is it? Because of the status quo, there's a great twist at the end that really caught me by surprise. I think this would have been a great end to Plankton's pursuit for the Krabby Patty, because in this episode, he actually thinks he finds the recipe. And the twist that Plankton thinks he is the secret recipe? Well, you'd think that would have taken him out of the restaurant business for good, or at least had him searching for another sandwich recipe. Personally, I think Plankton's army has one of the best balances of comedy timing, fun twists, and excitement of all the Plankton episodes. And it's easily among my favorite Plankton episodes. Right, dog. Hmm? Yeah, we should head off soon. It's getting a bit late. You know, so far there's actually been quite a few Plankton episodes throughout the first 12 seasons. So if you do think I missed any particularly great or terrible Plankton episodes, feel free to let me know in the comments below. It's nice to be talking about SpongeBob again, and I hope I might see you again in the future. You ready? All right, we'll head off. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.